Welcome to Pseudo Power. If you are looking for a change in your career, if you want to change your domain to a very interesting one, or if you are planning to earn one to two crores within 10 years of your career, then this channel is for you. Pseudo Power is back after a short break. We have divided the videos into multiple industries. The industries are selected based on four criteria. One, the industry should be emerging in India. Two, there's a lack of tech resources in India. Three, we should be able to coach you and train you and get a career in that industry. Four, the tech is already available, but the industry is still catching up. So my name is Girish Nair. I'm a media entertainment specialist. I've been working with largest OTT platforms, broadcast and radio stations across India. Um, this channel, I'm going to talk all about cloud, media and future technologies. In CMF, I will provide videos in four different complexities. If you are new to media and new to cloud, level 100 sessions is for you. If you have already done basic research on media and would like to understand more into cloud, then we will have level 200 sessions. Most of my videos will cater to level 200, where you have done 0 to 10 of both cloud and media, but I will take you from 10 to 100. If you are already a media expert and if you are trying to gain competency in cloud, then level 300 sessions are for you. And last. If you are already a media expert and you're already exploring cloud, but you're not able to put things into production and scale them, then level 400 sessions are for you. So guys, once again, welcome to CMAP presented by Pseudo Power. In our first session, we are going to cover a topic called as CMAF, which originally means Common Media Application Format. CMAF or Common Media Application Format is a packaging standard proposed by Apple and Microsoft back in 2016. It's been there since then, but the adoption was pretty little slow. The reason why I chose this topic today is because this is CMAF is gaining popularity because of certain new factors which is coming into the market like 4K, 8K content. Now this session do assume that you know basics of this segmented media streaming, but if not, let me give a high level overview. The content that you watch on YouTube has multiple resolutions like 1080p, 780p or 480p. Now this is possible because of segmented media and the distribution methods. CMF is one among them. There are other formats which have been widely used like HLS and Dash. So let me start with HLS. HLS or HTTP live streaming was introduced by Apple for distributing content to the Apple devices. In HLS, the video is segmented into multiple chunks of .ts formats. The group of these .ts formats forms a sub-manifest. Now, sub-manifest is a text file which says the format or the order in which these .ts chunks has to be played. The group of sub-manifests forms a manifest file which extension is .m3u8. So, when you are playing a content on your player, it's ideally an .m3u8 file or an URL which is when you are playing a content in your player it's basically the URL of the manifest which you get and the player is smart enough to decode all the things from that manifest. Most of the players today support such as until unless you get into complexities like DRM which is digital rights management which is required for premium content. That's where the next format comes into the picture which is Dash. Now Dash or Dynamic Adaptive Streaming over HTTP is a similar transport format like the HLS where the segmented video content is, is being transported to your player for the playback. This was introduced by MPEG, the Motion Pictures Expert Group. In Dash, the video is segmented into .mp4 formats and the manifest is of extension .mpd. Here we don't have any sub-manifest like HLS, but this is sufficient for, you, for the player to understand how the mp4 has to be played. Both HLS and Dash support ABR or Adaptive Bitrate which you see the resolutions in your video player. Right? This is sufficient to cater most of the video players across the globe. Then why do we change a format which is already widely accepted? The answer lies in optimization. Today, the video is streamed in 2K and 4K. With these resolutions, the size of the video file and time taken to convert the video file to these formats is humongous. Till now, industry used to transcode content to both HLS and Dash. But with these newer formats, both storage and transcoding is becoming expensive. With common media format, you have to just transcode the content into one format and create two manifests, which is just a text file. This reduces the storage size and the transcoding time by 50%. CMF can be used to achieve lower latencies, also manipulate the manifest to achieve better performance. Said so, CMF seems to be very fancy and solving all the problems, but in reality, there are other concerns, starting from transcoding to distribution. So let me take you through the transcoding profile. I will transcode the content using AWS Elemental Media Convert today in a demo. 
which will be basically in CMAF version of a word content. And we, I will also post a video where I will show how to get a CMAF using AWS Elemental Media Live, which is the live version of the uh, CMAF. So let's get started with the demo. Open the AWS console and search for AWS Elemental Media Converter. To create a CMAF content of what, you can go to create job and get on, click get started. There's an easier way to do that, that is through the job templates. Let's go to job template and search one job template for our requirement. So let's use the system templates. So if you look at the templates, there are different CMAF templates available. One, two, three, four CMAF templates. So what are the difference? This we see it's an ABC or H264 encoded content with a constant bitrate. The second one is again ABC with a QVBR or a quality based variable bitrate. You are going to choose this because it's an intelligent variable bitrate tiering system from AWS which help you to help you to encode contents with a content aware encoding process. So this would reduce your size by roughly around 40% but depending upon the file content. So let's choose this one for this particular demo. The after two you will see this again HEVC so it's basically H265 with CBR and H265 with QEBR. So let's go with this one. For that let's select the template and click on create job. In this you can see the predefined ladders of the output so which says it's 1080p this is 1080p at 1 Mbps, this is 1080p at 800 kps. So high, low, then there could be lower resolutions, 810p, 720p, depending upon your requirement, you can keep it or remove this. So this is an easier way to get started with all of the best practices in place. Here, you have to provide the output path or the destination path of S3 bucket where you are going to keep the content. Let me paste the destination. This is one of my S3 buckets. You can have any of your destination here. To add input, let's click on add input. Here you have to provide the path to your input file. It could be an S3 file or any file over the internet. Let me paste the URL. I'm taking a random 60 seconds file, mp4 file, and we'll convert this to a CMAF. So if you see the output, it is in CMAF format and it will be available in this particular folder. This folder is empty as of now, has nothing there. So let me start the transcoding job. Some things that you may have to be taken care of is check for the AWS integrations in which you should have enrolled. I have already have enrolled. You can create a role and associate here. Second thing is check for the job management in which you should have the QS default. There are other queues which you can create something like where you have an acceleration enabled, but those things will acquire some pro charges. Yeah. Bottom right, you have a create button, which you may not be able to see here, but let me click on create. The job has been submitted state and it will take some time for it to get completed. Now if you see the job has already completed and it took around 57 seconds for 54 seconds to, to transcode. Let us see the output folder. So if you go to the S3 bucket if where you see nothing just refresh and boom here we go with the files and, you and can this is the dash this is the dash URL for your word content. This is the HLS URL for your word content. So you see both the contents are available and you have all the content in a single format. There are no MP4s and TS segments. Hope you liked the video. Please like, share and subscribe.